Yo, what's going on guys? Mush back at it with another video here to talk about some Steam news and updates. We've got a big update on a pretty big free game in Soul Frame coming from One Digital Extremes. They held the first ever Soul Frame developer stream during uh, TennoCon 2024. They also had a lengthy demo. I was not surprising this lengthy of a demo, but here we are. We do have that as well and some details about the game. We'll talk that. Team Fortress 2 has gotten a major update. Obviously, that game needs all the help that it can get. And the next RGG title is set to be revealed here fairly shortly. We'll talk that at the end of this video. But first of all, Soul Frame, TennoCon 2024 gameplay. 17 minutes of new footage have dropped. Obviously, this coming from Digital Extremes might know them for Warframe. First Fable, Warsong's prologue spinning the first narrative threads of Soulframe comes Warsong prologue, a fable introducing the world, its characters and beasts. Our players get a sneak peek at the experimental approach to choices and character design as an envoy heal the ode curse to restore the forgotten culture and memories to the b beings of the world. New Ancestor and Omen Beast Verminia the Rat Witch uh, can enhance the customization of cosmetics while also assisting in crafting potions, elixirs, and others among the family of ancestors in the Nightfall. An encounter with a massive armored bear, Bromius, was also teased. New enemy and Nimrod take cover uh, from the mighty Nimrod, a towering foe capable of manipulating thunder and lightning while wielding a devastating Tesla-coiled melee staff. The first encounter with them won't be the last, so be sure to keep an eye on the sky. They noted the close testing we've been doing with our community has been so impactful we've learned a ton and we continue to listen and learn each day we're hoping to open this up to a lot more players this fall everything is still rough around the edges but that's part of our style the feedback is important to us and we really do iterate on it regularly the community manager also noted the community we formed around Soul Frame has been really inspiring for the team and the backbone of everything we do. We are welcoming more players than ever, and we can't wait to share our progress through regular dev streams with the team. So we continue to peel back Soul Frame's layers of intrigue. Again, the gameplay demo is quite lengthy at 17 minutes, and will certainly give you some insight on various mechanics of the game. Gotta say, from a visual standpoint, it looks quite good. Gameplay looks a little bit stiff, but ultimately, this is still very, very early. Leon, um, I do think the game has some style to it, and again, from an environment standpoint, it looks great as far as that's concerned. More of an action RPG here, with a lot of depth to its gameplay seemingly as well, with the different um, things you can utilize, so we'll see how that turns out. Doubt it'll see a full release for quite a while, but have an eye on that. That might end up being a game that certainly will be a game that gets a lot of attention. Again, with a game like that, it's going to be about sustaining interest, but right out the gate, that is that game is going to have a lot of interest, I would imagine um when it does ultimately release whether it be 2025 2026 i don't know next up team fortress 2 my oh my has it been quite a roller coaster in following this game Team Fortress 2 has gotten a brand new update. It actually dropped a few days ago. An update to Team Fortress 2 has been released. The update will be applied automatically when you restart Team Fortress 2. The major changes include for Summer 2024, featuring 10 new community maps in Embargo, Odyssey, Megaton, and much more. You've got Overgrown in there as well. Added the Summer 2024 cosmetic case. Added four new community-contributed taunts to Man uh, Company Store. Added 38 new community-created unusual effects. All cosmetic and taunt cases will grant 2024 unusual effects instead of their normal effects and then general this is where the big stuff is um really being implemented security and stability improvements fix uh, workshop cheats exploit disallow al uh, aliasing any existing convars that are not movement commands added language support, and a lot more. Uh, Team Fortress 2 has been a game that has had a myriad of issues, and there was a campaign launched to try to revitalize the game, and it has seemingly recovered in terms of the uh, upgrades to the game, and Valve actually did ban quite a lot uh, out there. Team Fortress 2 is one of the most iconic games of all time. I don't think that is a stretch whatsoever. Um, when I got into PC gaming, obviously, like, Team Fortress 2 was one of those games that everybody at least had to get and give a download to. It's now totally free to play, but you had to play it for a little bit. I never got super, super into it. The gameplay style just really isn't my cup of tea. Um, but, you know, I was super into Counter-Strike during this era of just getting into PC gaming. Like, Counter-Strike was my FPS when I was super into competitive FPSs. Uh, but Team Fortress 2 was always one of the standard bearers for a long, long time. And if you talk about games that drew people into PC gaming... 
I don't think it's too much of a stretch to say Team Fortress 2 is one of those games. Yes, was it available on 360 and PS3 via the orange box? Sure. Uh, but in terms of the actual Team Fortress 2 experience, that certainly was on PC. Uh, nice to see Valve actually uh, put their foot down a little bit and try to recover this game because it's a game with north of 1 million Steam user reviews. That's an absolutely staggering number, and it might be the most amount of reviews any game has. How, how much does Dota 2 have? Dota 2, ah, I lied. Dota 2 has 2 million. How much does Grand Theft Auto 5 has? Ah, okay, 1.67 million. All right, so I'm completely wrong about that. The review number account, 1 million reviews is still a lot. So, uh, yeah, it's a game that a lot of people play. Let's actually jump into the community hub as well. Right now, 83,000 people concurrently playing. I mean, a game from 2007 retaining that level of concurrent player base incredible uh that cannot be understated you guys some of you guys i should say might look at a number like 83k and be like oh my god pal world was at 2 million yeah like obviously most of you guys can utilize a single brain cell to realize the uh, foolishness in a comparison like that but i'm sure somebody uh will think of something like that but moving on from that and lastly the next rgg game will be revealed at tgs 2024 what rgg noted is that this game would be something that is surprising with rgg I don't even know what that really means. Judgment 3 would be pretty surprising given the uh, little bit of issue that happened with that game. I don't know the exact story as far as the um, issue with the actor that played the main character. Hopefully they get that resolved because Judgment and Lost Judgment were absolutely awesome. And hopefully Judgment 3 does come to fruition. I don't think it's Yakuza Kiwami 3 just because um, that's not really that surprising of a game. Really what would be surprising to me, what could fit that criteria, is Judgment 3 just because of the understanding that there's some issues in getting that game out, or perceived issues I should say, those might have all been resolved. Um, so that would be a little bit of a surprise. The the new mainline Like a Dragon game would be a surprise, but it definitely isn't that, given they just started doing the casting for that. And what it could alternatively be, and I really hope this isn't the case, just some total spinoff that is going to help RGG annualize this franchise because that is what they want to do. They want to annualize uh, Yakuza and, I guess, RGG as a studio releasing yearly games. You can't really do that with the mainline Like a Dragon game, so you will do spinoffs, titles like Like a Dragon Gaiden, titles like Like a Dragon Ishin. In fact, uh, RGG put out three games in the span of 12 months from, like, March of 2023 to January of 2024. So, you know, for them, getting out games isn't that big of a deal. It really can't be a mini-story, I don't think. Uh, there could be something that's like a side story that is a reminiscent of the older style of Yakuza gameplay, and maybe featuring Ichiban as a character. I don't know. Um, that would be a little bit surprising. Um, but yeah, I'm just throwing out ideas as far as what fits that surprising criteria. Even if it's something like Yakuza Kart, I would still probably check it out just because RGG has so much goodwill from me right now. Uh, Lego Dragon Infinite Wealth is my game of the year, I think. I think, uh, I, it's my game of the year so far. Um, I think I put it ahead of Final Fantasy VII Rebirth. I think I put it ahead of some of these other titles that have come out. But it's still, still got a long year ahead of us. But, uh, yeah, RGG... To me right now, can't do a lot of wrong. Can they do wrong? Sure. Not a lot of wrong. I mean, the deluxe edition for Like a Dragon Infinite Wealth was probably more of a Sega decision, but that was absolutely egregious. Nevertheless, hopefully, uh, we get a pretty cool announcement come TGS. And that is going to do it for me again. Soul Frame, a new free-to-play title to keep an eye on from Digital Extremes. I'm sure it's going to have quite the vested interest as more information is revealed. Team Fortress 2 has gotten a major update. And finally... Valve is putting their foot down in terms of getting things back on track with it. And RGG, their next title will be revealed at TGS 2024. That's going to do it for me. Let me know all your thoughts in the comment section down below. Thanks for watching. I will catch you guys in the next one. Peace out. Hey, what's going on, guys? Mush here again. Hope you enjoyed the video. As you guys might know, YouTube's notification system is sometimes a little bit wonky, even if you're subscribed to the channel. Maybe you're not abundantly aware that I uploaded a video to remedy that situation. Make sure you hit the bell notification button. This way, whenever I upload a new video and I try to upload as consistently as possible, you will be notified directly of the upload and you can watch it as soon as it goes live. I would really appreciate if you guys hit that button so you can stay up to date with all of the content I'm posting. But as always, guys, thanks for watching, and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace out.